Okay, uh, welcome back everyone to the uh, final session of uh, today's meeting. We have two more talks and coming up first of those talks is uh, Hugo Lowe, who will be talking about uh, cut points of non-homogeneous random walks. And Hugo will be talking for about 40 minutes on that subject. So Hugo, when you're ready. Uh, yes, let me first share the screen. Yeah. Yes. Right. Can everyone see this? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for the organizers for the invitation. Yes. I'm very happy to be here to share this uh, talk on the cut points of non homogeneous random walks. So uh, this is John work with uh, Mikhail Menshikov and Andrew Wade. They are both in Durham and uh, I'm in University of Edinburgh. So um, here's the outlines of today's talk. So first of all, I will give you some motivation about this problem is um, essentially some rough idea about uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about. Then we will formally define what do we mean by cut points of random walks. And then we'll have a few theorems to present on the sufficient conditions of the number of cut points. And then we'll go back to the motivation example, a uh, motivating example to uh, talk a bit more on that rigorously. We have also a few applications on higher dimensions that we will talk about. And I'll also pre uh, present some ideas of the proof of one particular theorem. Okay. So, First of all, let's talk about the motivation. So let's start with uh, less uh, rigorous model uh, setting. So consider a stochastic process on ZD. So for example, you can think of a homogeneous random walk or just simply a uh, simple symmetric random walk on ZD. Okay, so one of the most important property of uh, this kind of process is of its trajectory is the recurrence classification. So it's the classification of uh, recurrence and transient. So just to remind everyone, recurrence will mean that uh, the process will uh, visit all the points uh, infinitely many times, and transient would mean that um, the process there's uh, a positive possibility probability that the process will um, go around um, around the origin and then go away and never come back uh, to the infinity. So if one want to quantify these uh, classification instead of just this uh, dichotomy, recurrence or transient or trichotomy, if you think about positive recurrence and no recurrence, then in fact, on the recurrence side, one can consider the existence of moments of stopping time. That's one way to uh, classify the recurrence side. But uh, what we're focusing on this talk is about the transient side. So how can we uh, quantify uh, the, the transient side? So there's actually a few ways. And one of the answers here is uh, thinking of cut points. Okay, so cut points is one of the ways to uh, quantify the uh, transient property. So what do we mean by cut point? So roughly speaking, a cut point is a point which if we remove this point from the trajectory, then the, the trajectory will fall into two disjoint pieces. Okay, so if you think of a trajectory that is just just a curve without any loop, very smooth. So essentially every, every point is a cut point because if you, if you um, take away any, any point in the middle, then it, it drops into two disjoint piece. But think about say, if a, a, a trajectory with a loop, okay, in, in between, then all the points inside that loop will not be a cut point because uh, removing that will not, uh, separate the, the trajectory into two pieces, but any point outside of the loop will be a cut point, okay? Because uh, if you break that, then, then it will fall into two pieces. Okay, so under the uh, some mild conditions, cut points may appear only in the transient case where the trajectories will escape to infinity. Okay, so, so 
there's some mild conditions on this. Essentially, we we need to have some kind of non-confinement property. We we need to allow the, the process not to uh, stake at some point. So in some sense, the, the more cut points that the process have, the more transient it should be in a certain sense. So, so if you think of a process that have many, many loops, then it's very difficult to, to have cut points. So if, if you have many loops, it also means that it will keep on coming back in some sense, so it's more recurrent. But if a process looks like a very smooth curve without any loop, then that process should look more transient. And, and that, that one is actually the extreme case because uh, all of the bonds are cut points. Okay, so, so in, in this way, it is kind of believable that uh, to, just to count the number of cut points will give you somehow uh, uh, um, a way to quantify how transient a process is. So a fundamental question is here is, does a transient process have invertly many cut points or not? Okay, so this is actually a very interesting uh, question because from the first feeling, if you think of a transient process that will just escape to infinity, it seems that it will have many, many cut points and almost certain infinitely many. Well, it's true in some special case, but actually it's no, not true in general. So uh, let me give you some literature on uh, what is actually happening. So um, in here, first of all, we consider only simple symmetric random walk. Okay, the simplest case of random walk. So um, we are thinking of a simple symmetric random walk on set D. And D is greater than or equal to three because we want it to be transient. Okay, in D equals to one and two, it is recurrent. So first of all, Erdos and Taylor in uh, 1960 shows that cut points have a positive density in the trajectory if uh, D is greater than or equal to five. Okay, so what it means is when D is greater than or equal to five, it has a lot, a lot of cut points, has a po positive density of cut points. So uh, Lawler in 1991 improved the result saying that uh, transient symbol symmetry random walk for D greater than or equal to four have infinitely many cut points, okay? So uh, James and Paris in 1997 improved it further to say transient symbol symmetry random walk have infinitely many cut points in dimension uh, D greater than or equal to three. Okay, so this is essentially the end of or end of story of the simple symmetric random walk because essentially all of the transient symmetric symmetry random walk will have infinitely many cut points. So, but that, this is not the end of the story. So recently examples of transient Markov chain on Z plus with finitely many cut points were produced. So for example, by uh, Saki et al uh, in 2010, and these process are nearest neighbor birth and death chains that are less transient than a simple symmetric random walk on uh, set three. Okay, because, because that is what we are trying to look at. So we know that simple symmetric random walk in uh, dimension three is uh, transient and have infinitely many cut points. So if we want to have finitely many cut points, then we should expect something that is kind of less transient uh, than that. Okay. So um, to do this, so for this presentation, we will first focus on examining the phase transition for near critical process on R plus. Okay, so we will focus on, on, on R plus, okay, which is actually slightly different than uh, what we have just said before, because uh, now we are on a continuous space. So the cut point uh, definition is slightly different than what I just said. So let us formally define the model. So suppose that X is a discrete time stochastic process adapted to a filtration F and uh, take values in a measurable X, okay, with the uh, infimum of X is zero and supremum X is infinite. So you see the, the process is discrete time, but the uh, the space itself is uh, continuous, is uh, real plus. So we permit that F zero to be rich enough so that uh, X zero is random. So we don't need to fix um, what, what X zero particularly is or, or zero. 
Okay, after all, all the all it matters is the asymptotic behavior. So the starting point doesn't matter. And a point X of R plus is a cut point for a given trajectory of a stochastic process if roughly speaking, the process will visit X and then never return to zero to X. So anything uh, before that, after its first entry into uh, X uh, infinity. Okay, so there's a, a lot of interesting path that you can think of. So for example, if you think of, um, say, simply um, a path like zero, one, two, one, two, and then three, four, five, and so on, and, and, and go away, then you see one is not a cut point because uh, after you go to, uh, after you go to one, it will go to two, but then it will go, go back to, go back to, uh, uh, one and then go back to two. Okay, so so because it first entry to to two. Okay, okay. So so in here one one is a cut point in in this situation because it never visits uh, anything before one. Okay, and two is not a cut point. Okay, I'm very confused. So, so two is also a cut point because after after it go back to three, and after it goes to three, it will never go back to 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 one and two. Okay, so so in in a continuous setting, it, it, it makes more sense. So so let's try to to formally define what what a what a cut point is. Okay, so so what I want to give the example is actually in here. So so we will say x is a cut point if there exists a certain n n naught such that x n naught is is x okay so it hit x and for any n before n naught we have x n less than or equal to x okay and for any n greater than n naught then we have um, x n greater than x okay so go back to our example right, go back to our example if we take a uh, um, a path zero one two one two three four five and so on okay then one is not a cut point okay because it will go to two but then it will go back go back to to one so you cannot uh, find find this this n not number okay but two is okay because everything after two is is greater than that okay so, so you see that the crucial thing here is you see I hit two twice, but still it is a cut point because from this definition, I can visit as many times as I want at that point until I finally decide to go away and then never come back. So in here two, two is a cut point because of the equal sign here. But there's also a definition in the literature called a strong cut point where in here, two will not be a cut point because it visits twice. So to be a strong cut point, it can only visit once uh, at that point. And then before that, it never touches this point. And after that, it will always be bigger than that. Okay. So, I mean, there is a very subtle difference between a cut point and a, and a strong cut point. And because of that, we, in some sense, we want to see that actually this will never happen. Okay, so so let us denote C denotes the set of cut points, and let C S denotes the set of strong cut points. Okay, so there's two sets. So clearly, if something is a strong cut point, then it must be a cut point from the definition. So in this presentation, we want to give conditions under that either we have infinitely many strong cut points or we have finitely many cut points. Hi, Hugo, can I interrupt yes, briefly? Yes. I think uh, Deblina wanted to uh, ask a question. Ah, yes, sure. Hi, yes. Okay. Go ahead. So if you go back to your previous slide where you're defining the cut points. Yes. Uh, so this, so basically you need to have a sense of uh, ordering to have these cut points defined, right? So how would you do it in two dimension? Like a distance? Like it goes outside a certain wall? 
Uh, no, that no, that's why we are working on R plus. It is a uh, one dimension. So, uh, so yeah. So, but your results from the previous slide, when we saw the simple symmetric random walk, they were four dimensions higher than three, right? That in fact they are in fact resolved by James and yes, Peter yes. And so, so, so a point is is really a point there. So, so the definition is is slightly different. Essentially, a cut point would means that you own well a strong cut point will means that you only uh, touch that point once while any point before is is a separate path comparing to to the things that is happened afterwards so essentially it follows from uh, what i just said at the start is that the definition would be a cut point if it removed from a trajectory it causes it fall into two disjoint pieces the path so that oh. is why we start again and then we redefine everything again in the in a proper way. Oh, yes. Okay. So so the there's there's a subtle difference that um um that we will that we will uh talk about. So so in this talk we'll focus on uh cut points defined on R plus. Okay, thank because, you. Because because in, in their definition it is on set, so again it is a is a different setting, is on a, on the lattice. And now we are on one dimension and we are on R plus. Yeah. So, so okay, going back to, to this. So you see, there is a situation that you might think is possible is that we can have infinitely many cut points, but finitely many uh, strong cut points. So what an example of a trajectory looks like would be something like this, would be 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. So that you see all the points are hit twice so that it cannot have any strong cut points because the strong cut point only allow you to visit once while all of these points are cut points, okay? So in principle, you can create some trajectories like that so that you have infinitely many uh, cut points but finitely many strong cut points, okay? But our results show that such behavior is excluded for the model that we consider with probability one. Okay, so so this kind of uh, strange situation will not happen um, with probability one. Okay, so so everything is is so this would be the proper conditions that we are considered. So either we have uh, infinitely many strong cut points or finitely many cut points. So essentially, after this line, you can treat you can roughly speaking, you can treat uh, both of them the same thing. Okay, we are only thinking of infinitely many cut points or finitely many cut points. Okay, so let's start with a motivating example. So um, let's be very simple. So X n be a nearest neighbor random walk on Z plus. Okay, so so when we uh, have have the process at X, it can only jump to X minus one or X plus one. And we want to denote the first two increment moments at x by mu one and mu two, where the, the mu k is defined as this. So it's the increment moments. So the, the mu one denotes the drift of the process and mu two is essentially the, the variance of it. So there's, a, so there's the famous Lamperti problem, which is essentially the, the critical case uh, about recurrence and transient classification. So uh, suppose that mu one x is of all the uh, c one over two x. Okay, so it's around c one over two x plus some smaller order, and mu two will converge to sigma square. So the critical value of c here, c critical, is actually sigma square, and the process would be transient if this c one is greater than c critical and it's recurrent if C1 is less than C critical. Okay, so essentially if you have enough drift comparing to the fluctuation of the process, then it will go away, then it will be transient because you have greater. If you do not have enough drift, if you do not have enough push comparing to the uh, fluctuation of the process, then the process will be recurrent. Okay, so we are focusing on this transient case. In the transient case, Later, we will see that there is actually infinitely many cut points here, okay? But the interesting situation is we haven't talked about what happened if C1 is exactly the critical case, okay? So what happened if C1 is exactly equal to C critical? 
So then we need to look at the critical window of the second criticality. Okay, so if C1 is equal to C critical, then we actually need to look at the next term. So the next term that we are considering is with uh, 2x log x of order, and we have uh, C2 above plus some uh, smaller terms. So the process here, again, it is transient if C2 is greater than C critical and recurrence if C2 is less than C critical. And this is the same critical value is sigma square. Okay, so you see, if this one is at the critical value, and if you consider C2, if you have enough push, then it will become transient, and if it doesn't, it will become recurrent. Okay, but very interestingly, in this case, in this transient case this time, we'll see that there are actually finitely many cut points. Okay, so, so this is the motive, example to see when we actually have finitely many cut points and when will be uh, infinitely many cut points. So we'll try to replace these asymptotics by some inequalities and we want to consider more general state space in the uh, non-Markov uh, situation. So the, so the model is uh, relatively general comparing to what we had discussed uh, above. Okay, so um, we need to have a few assumptions on our model. So suppose that Xn is just a process on R plus adapted to Fn. Okay, no, no other um, extra assumptions on the on the mu one and mu two yet. And uh, we want to have the bounded increments. Okay, which is a very sensible um, um, assumption. So that uh, the the process won't jump away immediately. So suppose that there exists a constant b such that uh, for all n, we have uh, the probability of this less than b is one, okay? That the jump size is less than b is equals to one. We also want a non-confinement condition, okay? So we suppose that lim soup of xn is uh, positive infinity. So it, it falls the process definitely um, escape from infinity rather than uh, stuck at some point. Okay, because in general, it is possible to be transient and still stuck at some point. So we don't want uh, those strange uh, situations. So we, we suppose this non confinement condition. So for n in Z plus, we will impose some conditional increment moments here. So you see this thing is very similar to the increment uh, moments that we have just described, but because now we did not assume the uh, Markov property. So now this part becomes uh, given the, the all the information before. Okay, and we we want to impose some uh, bound on on this um, quantity. Okay, so uh, we want this to hold uniformly in n and almost surely on uh, x n greater than x for large enough x. So we we only care about the tail side. So to formulate these conditions, we suppose that there is some measurable functions, mu bar, uh, mu under bar and mu upper bar, such that um, we have this expectation bounded by mu lower bar and mu upper bar that only depending on xn, that only depending on the, on the last position. And, and this is true for, for all n. And uh, we only need k equals to one and two here. Okay, we only need to bound the first two moments. So uh, one thing to notice is that if the process is Markov, then in fact, mu lower bar is equals to mu upper bar and everything is, a, is have an equal sign. Okay, so we further, we, we still need another additional but very mild assumption is that we want the lim if of mu to bar x to be greater than, strictly greater than zero. So that uh, the process will have at least some movement all the time. Okay, so this is the third, first theorem. This is a sufficient condition for infinitely many strong cut points. So suppose the three conditions, uh, the bounded increments, non-confinement, and um, the, the, the minor, con, minor assumption hold. And suppose also that we have the limit of 2x mu one under bar minus mu two upper bar is greater than zero. And we have the limb soup of uh, x mu one upper bar is finite. Then we will have probability of 
um, this so strong cut points uh, infinitely many strong cut points is one okay so moreover if the expectation of x zero is finite then we can actually know the density of of um, these cut points so there exists a constant c such that the expected number of cut points in this zero to x region is greater than or equal to c log x for all x sufficiently large so let's look at this first condition here so this condition by the Lamperti results this condition one is sufficient for transient and if you just look at simple symmetric random walk in, in, in set D, this is just equivalent to saying D is greater than or equal to three. Okay, so, so this condition guarantees the process to be transient. And um, the, the only condition here is, is, is really this one. Okay, then we will, then we will have inverted many strong cut points. So let's look at the other size first uh, before we go for some example. So this is a sufficient condition for finitely many cut points. So intuitively, we want some process that is less transient than a simple symmetric random walk in set, uh, set three, because uh, this have infinitely many uh, uh, cut points and we want something to be less transient so that we have finitely many. And this result only apply to the uh, Markov case. So you see the mu one upper bar and mu one lower bar disappear because they are all equal. So in this case, we need to assume there is some stronger regularity assumptions, um, which is essentially a bit stronger, but that implies the non-confinement uh, property. And also we have the bounded increments and the minor assumption holes. Then um, we suppose that uh, we have constant x0 and uh, a finite d such that first of all we have um, the drift is greater than or equal to zero and then we have this condition so 2x mu 1 minus mu 2 is less than or equal to d divided by log x okay so essentially in this situation it will be the process will be still transient but it will be only a bit transient Okay, so it's, it's, so it's if, or almost almost to the critical case because we are limiting uh, this quantity to, to be very small, to be d over log x. Then, in fact, in this case, we will have um, finitely many cut points with probability one. So let's look at the example. Let's try to go back to our motivating uh, example. So suppose that, uh, say, lim limit of um, mu two of x is a uh, sigma square, okay? And mu one is of this form, okay? So it's very similar to, to what you have seen before. So you see there's no, a C1, no. yes. Sorry, I have a question in the previous. Uh, yes, one. yes, go ahead. So how, how to visualize the infinite and finitely many cut points? Do you mean that by having a finitely many cut points, I, I I mean, I'm having trouble imagining what it may look like. I can understand what is an infinite one, but like. So essentially, if if a process that have no cut points, that means mm -hmm. that the, the process just keep on overlapping itself. So you cannot find a points that kind of uh, separate the path into, into two bits. Mm -hmm. It will keep on repeating. Bit repeating. So if, if the process is recurrent, it means that it will visit uh, all the points infinitely many times, then clearly there will be no cut point because it, it will mm -hmm. just keep on visiting. The other extreme is that it just goes straight to, to, mm -hmm. to somewhere else, then it is a very transient case because all of them would be, would be um, cut points. So there will mm -hmm. definitely infinitely many. So mm -hmm. by finitely many is something in the middle. So, so only a very tiny proportion not not a, not even a proportion, but only a few points in the process, and um, it can separate the whole trajectory into two parts. But most of the parts, it, you will keep on coming back, and you can't break it um, into two parts. Okay, so these are finitely many cut points. Means that 
so the trajectory will still be divided into finitely many components, right? Or no? So, so if it's finitely many couples, it means that you can you can find finitely many bonds that mm. at that point you can you can break it into 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 two bars because the the path is infinite so by say in finitely many that's only it can is it's not even a, a positive density so it's only only a few points okay. there so it's kind of very very well it's still in the transient case but only just in the, okay. in the sense that it only have just enough push to, to push the process to 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 the uh, infinite side. Okay. So so it is it is a it is a very um, critical case for finitely many cut points. So going back to this setup, if we set up new one and um, equals to this quantity, then if C1 is greater than sigma square, then it means that in this case there will be infinitely many cut points by our theorem one, okay? Because because we can apply the theorem one and we, we see that this quantity will satisfy uh, that condition will be um, greater than zero, so it will it will have infinitely many cut points. And if C one is less than that, then it is just recurrent, okay? So so there will be um, there will be no cut point there. Okay, regardless of what is happening in C2. Okay, so C2 is doing nothing here when C1 is not in the critical case. So the critical case is when C1 is equal to sigma square, then C2 less than sigma square will imply recurrence, and C2 greater than sigma square will imply transient. And in this later regime, in, in this case, then if we apply theorem two, then we can see that uh, the exam, the, this is an example of process with few, only a few cut points. Okay, we find many, many cut points. So, and um, one can also see uh, Sake et al. paper in 2010 for a sharper version in the nearest neighbor case. So in the nearest neighbor case, and um, they show that the, the critical region is actually around log log. Okay, so it's something in between this and, and this. Okay. So there is also applications uh, to, to the higher dimensions. So uh, the example I want to show you here is uh, elliptic random walks, which were introduced uh, in uh, Georgia et al. in 2016, and are non-homogeneous random walks with zero drift that can be transient in any dimension d greater than or equal to two. So the elliptic random walk have zero drift and um, describe the walk by looking at the radial drift and transversal drift. And depending on which one is uh, bigger and how to, how to compare the size of it, it can be transient or recurrent. But in, in our case, we, we are looking at the transient um, situation. So with some of the elliptic random walk, it can be transient even in the, in the dimension D is greater than uh, equal to two, or in particular, D equals to two. Okay, and, and it will still have zero drift. And uh, we have a theorem saying that, uh, suppose that is a time homogeneous transient elliptic random walk, okay, on um, Rd, which D is greater than or equal to two, then almost surely there are infinitely many cut annually. Okay, so what do we mean by cut annually here? is essentially not the same as the cut point on, on ZD that we have first defined. It is a generalization, is a anal analogous of uh, what we said about R plus in our cut point uh, definition. So instead of only one point, now you consider something like this uh, uh, annually here. Okay, so this is an example of a transient elliptic random walk and, and a cut annulus. So you, you see it at this point, before this point, the walk will all inside this, um, this circular thing, okay, from, from the origin. And after this point, it will always um, outside of this region. So essentially this cut annually will cut the trajectory into two parts, okay. So this is this is different 
from a cut point because uh, there will be many, many cut points in this path. If, if you look at, at this clearly, then probably, probably these are cut points. These are all cut points. But actually, there is not many, many uh, cut annually here. So it's uh, a bit more rare because if you, if you cut here by drawing a circle like here, you will see that uh, the process go back and forth, um, hit, hitting it multiple times. So these are not, all of them are not cut cut annually. Maybe in here, you can only draw two cut annually, like in here or, or in, in here. So the result is, is a lot more stronger. And there is a corollary of this uh, higher dimension application, which is essentially uh, due to James and Paris in 1997. And now it's a special case of theorem three. Is um, suppose that we have a homogeneous random walk on set D, D is greater than or equal to three with bounded jumps, zero drift, and finite variance, then the random walk is transient and has infinitely many cut annually. Okay, so, so this is a special case of what we have introduced is theorem three, because in, in here, um, it is non-homogeneous. Okay, so each of the points, um, although they are all zero drift following a certain pattern, but it is not homogeneous. While in this special case, we assume that it is a, a homogeneous random walk. Okay, so um, let's look at the idea of proof of theorem one. So um, this theorem one is about infinitely many cut points. And just to simplify everything, we will only look at a special case on uh, Z plus. So uh, originally we considered the process on R plus, but just to be simple, we only consider Z plus here. Okay, so the idea is we want to consider some heating probability estimate. So roughly speaking, we want uh, this kind of heating probability estimate, we call it heating probability estimate one. So the probability of given that Xn starts at X plus one, it will never hit X again. And we want this probability of is of order one over x. Okay, so clearly, if we can have have this event happening, then x plus one is a cut point because it will never hit uh, x again. So the idea is, if the sum of uh, because if you sum this off, sum of one over x diverge, so we can actually immediately see that the expectation of the number of cut points is uh, infinite. Okay. But uh, because we are thinking of probability, so we, we need to apply, we want to apply the borough cantelli lemma. So in fact, if the hard half of the borough cantelli lemma were applicable, then this would suggest that there are infinitely many cut points, then we are done, okay? But the problem is these events are not independent across this one value of X. So suppose if a certain value, say five is a cut point, then it will affect if 10 is a cut point or not, because it, it affects the, the trajectory, the whole trajectory. So these are things are not independent. So the usual borough can tell lemma will not apply here. Okay, so, so this problem actually caused a lot of uh, complication here. So instead, we need to apply the following conditional version of the Cochrane Stone lemma, which looks like this. So first of all, we still have uh, the probability of, of uh, the previous events to be infinite, which, which is good, we already have this, but then we want to calculate these uh, complicated expression here. So actually the things on the uh, numerator is okay. These things are similar to what we have just calculated, but the problem is this uh, intersection in the denominator. So this intersection of events in the denominator uh, if we want to calculate this, we need to bound the probability that both X and Y are cut points. So this is uh, slightly more complicated here. So to do this, we need to consider another probability estimate that is roughly speaking is something like this estimate two. So we want the probability of given that XN starts at X plus one, and we want it hit Y which is after x plus one and before hitting x. So we want some probability like this. And we want to show that it is of order of this form. So if we have this using this estimate and also estimate one, then we can actually calculate um, the, the uh, intersection, this probability here with the, with the intersection, because we can just have this multiplied by the probability of um, 
the, the process start at a certain place and then never never go to the region previously. Okay. And then if we multiply them together, then we can have um, both of them are cut points. And applying that lemma, then we can have the probability of infinitely many cut points is greater than a, than a constant epsilon, which is greater than zero. Okay, but this is still not we what we want because we want this to be exactly one. So we want, need to apply a version of the Levy uh, zero one law, and so that we have the above probability here is in fact one. So you see, there's um, a bit more complications on out plus because now the process is continuous. So this kind of argument will not work directly. You can't just have x plus one and then going uh, back one step or go, going further. And uh, the cut points are no longer cut points because the, pro the, the whole process is um, continuous. So you have a lot of uh, cut intervals uh, in between. So that uh, within two points, all of them are cut points. Okay, and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to count how many cut points are there because there's always infinitely many. If you have a very small, tiny interval that are all cut points, then there is already infinitely many. So the density will make more sense in, in this case. That's why we formulate the theorem in, in a density way. And uh, do I do I still have time or or I should stop here? You have a couple of minutes if you want it. Okay, okay. So um, so the last thing that I want to show you is uh, the heating probability estimate. So how we can get uh, this statement. Um, say probability of starting at x plus one, we never hit uh, this point. How can we show that this is of order one over x? So again, we will restrict ourselves to the special case of z plus. Then suppose that we have the assumptions in our theorem. So suppose that mu one is of order c over x and mu two is of uh, sigma square. Then we want to calculate this uh, expectation. Okay, so essentially this is just by Taylor expansion of uh, what is happening with, with uh, xn plus one. And then we, we get this expression. And what we are trying to do is we want this um, expectation to close to close to zero so that uh, the, the process is essentially a martingale. Okay, so we want this right hand side to be close to zero. So if you ignore this a small error term, we want this uh, minus c plus uh, gamma plus one divided by two times sigma squared to be zero. Okay, that's why we, if we solve this, we actually want this gamma, this power to be this value, to great, which is greater than zero, so that by the Forster theorem, this will guarantee us the transient um, property. So now we want to let this small p to be the probability of hitting this left region zero to x before hitting the right region which is uh, x plus y to the infinite, given that xn equals to x plus one. So if you look at the line here, say at some point we have xn equals to x plus one here, and we want to consider which side we will hit it first. Will, will we hit this, uh, the left side be before x first or anything after x plus y? So for this p, we want to let it to, to hit it on the left side first. Okay, so this is a quite a standard calculation from uh, probability theory. So we want to apply the OST, the optional stopping theorem here. Then we get um, this, this calculation that uh, x plus one to the power minus gamma is just P hitting this, this side first times x to the power minus gamma plus one minus P to the, to the other side, x plus y to the power minus gamma. So you can solve out um, the, 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 the P here in, in general. So for example, if we want to get, get the estimate one there, then we can just take Y goes to infinity. So then the probability P here will become just hitting zero to X here because before this in infinity condition, we immediately satisfy. So this is discard. So we have this uh, probability on the left-hand side. And for the, for the right-hand side, so you see in this equation, x plus y, because y go to infinity, then this term vanish. So you only have left with the, the two terms and you take the x to the power minus gamma to the other side, you solve out what p is. So p would be uh, of this form, okay? Which you see that this is of order one minus uh, um, o, uh, x to the power minus one. 
So you see, if, if these events is happening, then X is not a cut point. So in reverse, if you want X is a cut point, then it will be one minus this probability. And that is how you get uh, order one over X here. And just some concluding remarks. So other than the cut points, there's also other ways to quantify transients, such as uh, last exit time or strong transients. And we are looking at some of the connections here in the ongoing work. And uh, this is the list of reference. So um, the result is um, all on archive, is submitted um, to a journal. Um, and uh, this is the Saki paper uh, in 2010, which showed you some um, examples on the nearest neighbor random walk, which are finite in many cut points. And um, this, is, this is the paper about the elliptic random walks. And, and uh, that's all I want to say. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Hidigo.